Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. Tonight, I finally get to shoot with my Askar D1 and D2 Color Magic filter set. I got these six months ago during galaxy season. I haven't got a chance to shoot through them until now. And I'm really excited because this is also the first time I'm going to be shooting narrow band through an OSC camera. I have never shot narrow band through an OSC camera before. It has always been in monochrome. I've been shooting monochrome narrow band pretty much since the beginning. So I'm really excited to see what type of photos I can produce with these filters. And one thing I should add is this is not a budget filter set. The price point that this is at, it puts it in the same category as say some other well-known premium filter manufacturers. Also, Sharpstar claims that we'll be shooting at a bandpass of eight to nine nanometers on the HA and S2 side, and also six to seven nanometers on the O3 side. But here's where it gets really special. And can I add, I love the packaging on this. <laughs> I'm a sucker for good packaging, but this filter set comes with a HA and O3, which is pretty common. But it also comes with a sulfur 2 and O3. This is not very common. Well, probably now it is. <laughs> uh, we're probably seeing more and more S2 and O3 filters, but you're able to create Hubble palette type images by extracting the channels and combining them together, much like I would with my monochrome setup. So I'm really excited to see what something like that looks like in OSC. I really like one shot color and I like the convenience and I really want to experience the convenience of narrowband through an OSC camera. All right. So what are we shooting with tonight? Well, you'll notice I have quite a few things lined up here. We're going to be shooting with the Skywatcher GTI. I'm going to keep things really simple. And this is my Xenostar Z61 APO refractor. I actually haven't shot with this since maybe my year two in astrophotography. It's actually been in storage uh, for quite some time. And I'm just in the mood for some wide field astrophotography. So Xenostar Z61. I also have the 1X field flattener on it by William Optics, and I returned it back to the way it looked in 2020. This was my first refractor ever. So I got an EAF version 1, ZWO F4 30mm guide scope with the ASI 120mm mini. And look how cute this is. Look how tiny. So here it is, the 61mm uh, synthetic fluorite objective. So that FPO 53 glass is going to ensure some really nice performance and hopefully we'll get a pretty awesome photo. Also, we'll be shooting with the APS-C sized ASI 071 MC. I haven't shot with this camera for a little bit, so I'm excited to get a super wide field of view. This plus this is going to give me about three and a half degrees of sky. So that's a big patch of space. And the target for this evening is going to be WR-134. I know, I shot that for my anniversary, but hear me out. I know how super faint that part of the Milky Way is. It's faint in HA, it's faint in S2, it's faint in O3, for goodness sake. So I need to know how much signal I can actually pull. So it makes sense for me to shoot there. Plus, since I've shot it before, I kind of know what to expect already. So I'm really excited to kind of see that. And we're going to reveal more of the nebula because I'm shooting in a wider field of view. Not only am I going to get WR-134,
but I'm going to get all the way up to the Tulip Nebula. That's a big patch of space. So I guess there is one thing left to do, and let's get on out there. All right, guys, I'm down here. I'm all set up. I'm focused. My guide scope is calibrating right now. And then we're going to start imaging. I don't know if you can see the horizon over here, but there's a bit of clouds over there. Got about two hours until it actually moves in. And check this out. Look at this. Here's my scope. Isn't it cute? It's so tiny. Got my D1 filter in here. And I had no idea what to expect. You know, I've never shot narrowband through uh, an OSC camera. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what this is going to look like. All right, my first sub of this area is about to return. Okay. Excited to see it right now. 20 seconds. And we're going to see. And my guiding is really good right now. I'm, my total error is at it's around 0 0.80 right now, which is pretty good. All right, here we go. Oh, nice. This is this is a four minute sub. I decided to go with four minutes. And OK, so I got the tulip in there for sure. And I definitely got the flower bit and I do see WR134. This is pretty impressive. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, my monochrome camera would definitely have captured more, but stacked, this is probably going to look really good. This is a lot of signal, guys. Do you guys hear that? I got coyotes howling behind me and also in front of me right now. They sound pretty close. It happened right when the moon came out. So the moon is just over the horizon. And I've actually completed two hours in my D1 filter and it's still clear. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna put in my D2 filter and capture some S2. So perhaps we'll get to make a full SHO tonight. I'm gonna try and get two hours on this. All right, very interesting right now. I just got my first sub back with my Asgar D2 filter and where WR-134 is, I don't know if you can see this here, I'm picking up some O3 signal in that. And that's there's actually a lot of S2 in the area I can see. So I'm kind of getting excited seeing how this is going to turn out. But that's actually a lot of O3 signal that it's picking up right here. I think we are looking out here. See these clouds? They're everywhere but my target right now. And you see the clouds are kind of swarming around the area now. But it's still clear where I need it to be. So I'm just going to keep shooting. Um, I'm on my last hour, if you can believe that. And yeah, it's totally clear around Cygnus right now. Ended up getting about an hour and a half on my D2 filter. And I'm going to take that and run. I'm taking flats right now. And I'm going to pack it in. I'm sleepy. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. And yeah, I'm just going to pack it up. I'm definitely going to have some coffee in the morning. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess this is good night. All right, guys, we are back, and I hope you're excited to look at this data. I already separated my channels out, so I have an HA master frame, I have an S2 master frame, and I have an O3 master frame. So let's take a look at this. So here's my HA master frame, and 
that is a lot of data, especially in OSC. One thing I need to tell you guys is I forgot to tighten my rotator down, unfortunately. I found that out when I was shooting flats last night. So I introduced a little bit of tilt in my subframes. But luckily, this isn't the star test. Uh, that's going to be on the next video. We're going to look at the stars that these filters produce. But uh, that's not going to skew our results for the signal test we're getting from the nebula. But I wanted to let you guys know about that up front. Okay, so WR-134 we got here. And we also got its tail. And what I'm really impressed with is this is pretty low signal areas here. And we are getting a lot of signal in this area. We also have the dark nebula bits here, well-defined. And we have the structure here. This is a, another flowery part of the Milky Way. And I think it's ironic it's next to the Tulip Nebula up here, which we got in great detail. And we also got the dark nebula that's also in the Tulip, well-defined. So, so far, the D1 on the HA side of things is very impressive. Here is the S2 that we got. And this is a little different story, right? Uh, we barely got any S2. We did get some, but because we got so little signal, I'm probably not going to use it in my final image. Actually, probably not. I didn't use it in my final image. <laughs> but we did get a lot of signal. It's going to take a lot of exposure time to bring this S2 out. So I'm probably going to keep plugging away at this. But I just wanted to let you guys see what S2 was like through these filters. And remember, we put these filters in a very difficult situation. In my next video, I'll make sure to select a target that not only has bright stars in it, but also has an abundance of S2, so we can see how these filters handle that. Okay, now let's look at our O3. Here's our O3 master frame. And remember, O3 gets captured twice. So no matter which filter you put in front of your camera, whether it's the D1 filter or the D2, O3 is always getting captured. So you have to put all your O3 stacked files together after you separate them and create one master frame, which is awesome. So here's the O3 in this area, and we got WR-134, guys. Check that out. We got the outer shell, and we got the tulip, and you see here we got a lot of the structure in this flowery part of the Milky Way. So if we compare the HA and the O3 together, we definitely got the structure. And this is all the O3 that is just sitting on top of this entire area. And if we look a little bit closer, we did get the O3 shell of WR-134. Uh, we did not get uh, the fainter parts of it. It just kind of gets lost. And it might be because of the resolution of the Z Z61, but I just don't think we captured enough light. Remember, we only got an hour and a half on the D2 filter and two hours on the D1 filter. So this is not nearly enough exposure time for this, especially shooting at f5.9. So, but... From the time that we had, I, I do think that this is really impressive. All right, so let me close these out real quick and we'll take a look at our final image here. And here it is. I chose to create an HOO palette photo and combined, it looks really, really cool. We got the faint, O3 shell in WR-134, all the surrounding nebula. We got the tulip up here, and it's got a lot of contrast, right? I'm really surprised in these filters because 
we are shooting at a pretty wide bandpass, but the contrast on these filters are rather good. We did lose a little bit of signal in here when we combined everything, but it is still there, actually. Now if we take a closer look at it, it's still there. But all in all, these filters did an amazing job. And I can't wait for our second video when we take a look at how they handle halos on really bright stars. It appears that the color magic filters are definitely in that premium category that I was talking about earlier. But I guess there's only one thing left to do, guys, and enjoy my photo of WR-134, the Tulip Nebula, and all the good stuff. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the Ascar D1, D2 star test. And what do you guys think of the Ascar Color Magic filter set? Let me know down in the comments. So I guess I'll see you on the next one. Peace.